to week two of the high school football season. Warsaw will take on the Versailles Tigers at home this week. And uh, we've got Coach Ryan Boyer here. Coach, welcome to the show. I appreciate you having me back. And uh, we're going to kind of recap the game last week versus mm -hmm. Cole Camp. Of course, a 34-6 to win. So you can't win them all if you don't win the first one, right? That's true. That's so, very uh, true. But had Cole Camp in town last week. And uh, kind of recap that one for us. Tell us how it went and what your feelings and thoughts were. Overall, we were very pleased. When you, you have your week one game there, you just you have a lot of unknowns and um, had some kids step up and play in some positions. And uh, we just, across the board, the way our, our older kids led and then our, our younger kids stepped up, it was, it was a great team win. You know, if you kind of go through the game, you can call it a little bit of a slow start, but but again, some of the some of the nerves. And but no like slower that. than you would expect in week one. Exactly. So, and of course, like you said, a couple kids playing in some spots that they hadn't been. Yep. A um, yep. couple new offensive guards. Yep. Um, <laughs> one a young one. Um, but uh, but really, yeah, for what the way you put it was a little bit of a slow start, but nothing that you wouldn't expect in the in the first week of the season. So, um, we give up the first touchdown. Yep. Give up, a, you know, and it looked like to me, of course, I sit up in the press box yep. with other guys and. And we see them run the same play, just like you guys did. The same play, the same play, the same play. And of course, yep. they took advantage um, through that right side, and they scored first. And then we made some adjustments. They didn't see the end zone from then on, and uh, we scored 34 unanswered for the 34 to six final. So, of course, started seeing things opening up. And I'm going to look at my article refer oh, here. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, but Cameron Severs breaks for a big one, about 20 yards, I think, over there towards your sideline, and then that set up Brady for a big run. Yeah, yeah. It is, you know. They had that opening drive, and like we told our kids, they, said they came out running some middle line option, and um, that's something they've never shown before. And right. that's that's uh, the beauty of week one. <laughs> um, they didn't show Jamboree, and so, like I said, made some adjustments. And I think Coach Miller made that comment, this isn't what we practiced for yeah, all yes, week, right? Yes, so. and then they got us uh, with their counter a little bit, and same deal, just out of a different formation. So, uh, great job there. And, and yeah, you know, that, that opening drive, we had a holding penalty, it kind of killed the momentum, but then, Seavers, you know, broke that run, and then Brady settled in, and you know, in the passing attack, we knew it was going to hit. It was just we, were, our timing was a little bit off, and our spacing with our receivers was a little bit off. Right, and and that's where we saw two. I don't. I think one was overthrown, one was underthrown to yep. Cam. Yep. Um, that was. I think they were both down the left side. Yes. And then uh, we saw Cam line up on the left side again. That's when the second touchdown happened. That was a, a thirty-six yard touchdown. No. That actually, Brady had another touchdown run yes, before yeah. that one, um, but then that's when uh, they hooked up for their long touchdown pass. Yeah. So yeah. So uh, that made it. Uh, that was a 42-yard touchdown. Made it 20 to six, um, and then we had a newcomer step in and make a big play on the defensive side to get the ball back in our hands. Yeah, Nate Banfield. This is uh, his first varsity start, sophomore year here, filling in for James Kellner for us, and uh, you know he's he's done a great job and. We're kind of rotating those guys, one, to keep them fresh, but two, also just to be able to coach them up throughout. Um, you know, like we always tell them, just put yourself in position to make a play. Right. He did a great job there. And I know he's excited. I asked him after the game, you know, what he thought, and he said, I, I didn't think I was going to get to it, you know, <laughs> and then uh, obviously he did. And so, yeah, that, and that was, but, he, but he made a heck of a catch. He really did. It was he a really heck of did. a catch to come up with his first pick in the varsity. So um, that set up a, looks like, a, Touchdown by Nick Bagley. Yep. Um, Nick ran hard all night and uh, kind of took advantage of some holes. We he scored, made it twenty six to six, and then of course we score late in the fourth mm -hmm. um, after we had put some prep, some JV guys in and some younger guys, um, and that was Oliver Robertson t uh, capped off the scoring there for, and that was the thirty four to six final. Um, that was all that drive there was actually set up by a couple nice runs by Ty Williams. One was really nice again. It got called back by yep. a penalty, um, but anyway, thirty four to six. Slavin's finished. 160 yards on the ground, had 19 rushes, two touchdowns. Bagley also 104 yards, yep. so that's that's encouraging. You got two backs out of the backfield that are running for 100 yards, um, and I think he did that on just 11 carries, so his average kind of looks pretty good right exactly. now early yeah. in the season. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, Williams had 29, and then a couple others followed there. Um, Slavens, of course, just completed two passes. I'm sure you want to see that improved upon as yep. the season goes and maybe trying to find some different targets other than Seavers because I'm sure the more videos out, Oh yeah, more coaches see that, right? So uh, hopefully that opens up some opportunities for Tayton or Grant Chapman or whoever else is out there. Uh, looking here on the defensive side, a big night from Garrett McGann. Yeah, Garrett did a great job. Um, some of that was the way they were blocking that option, but you know he's a big guy. But you know a lot of times you don't think when you have somebody 
260, 270 pounds out there, but his feet are great. And he, uh, you know, and like we stressed to all of our kids, as the game went on, you know, we the conditioning we do is so that you can really thrive in a third and fourth quarter. And uh, he was a force and a presence all night long. And uh, tracking him down from behind, making plays on the play side, and just really setting that edge. We were very pleased with his performance, especially since he plays both ways. And eight and a half tackles, that's a big night. And that's the guys. And what I noticed when I wrote the story this week was a lot of the tackles were your front seven. Yes. You didn't have a lot of the guys in the secondary leading You're exactly, tackling yeah, that. Yeah. You don't want to see that as a coach, yeah, right? Yep. So, and, and like you said, Garrett went – but went both ways all night long and finished with eight and a half tackles and really carried that offensive line all night long, having a couple new guys on there, mm -hmm. especially some younger guys, but really kind of anchoring things down there for everybody on both sides of the ball. So I thought that was really good leadership for Garrett. Um, let's see. Uh, coaches made some adjustments at halftime. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's, let's give some other coaches some props here because they – that first six, yeah. but then settled in and gave up nothing the rest of the way. And like you said, even Coach Miller on the defensive side didn't prepare for what yeah. he saw. Yep. So wasn't able to do that, but made some adjustments at halftime. Let's talk about those guys. Yeah. Um, you know, Coach Coach Miller, Coach Cachot, they, they we all work with all the kids and we all coach both sides. But, um, you know, they really set their focus and were able to review that film in game and, and meet. You know, I always, I always go down and talk to the team, kind of overview right at halftime. And then the coordinators come in. And, you know, and, and the big thing was just, on the counter, our backside play, again, different formation. We were we were too aggressive, honestly. And, you know, he talked to those linebackers, got those those guys straightened out, your show with our backside D ends. And then um, then it's with that midline, you know, understanding space. We, we always cover that option stuff during camp. But, again, going into this week, they literally never shown it. And so uh, it was a quick recap and, and just get, get those guys settled down uh, and understand what they're seeing. And, and like I said, fortunately, our guys as a whole up front were getting it done. And we were, didn't have to rely so much on our, our secondary to be making a ton of tackles and plays like that. And then, you know, Coach Morrison came in and a uh, big thing with him and Coach Parker on the offensive side was just, it's more so just settling down. And we saw when we watched film, we were there. Uh, we were either running by some blocks or we give Brady a hard time sometimes. He, uh, he gets so excited on a pass that, you know, he. <laughs> Pretty sure it's going to be a touchdown, and he may he may overthrow it a right. little bit, and so and we saw that a couple of times. But again, some kinks that you hope they work out after that first week. Without so, a doubt. So um, Wildcats take on Versailles uh, this Friday tonight, and uh, we're going to be right back here after a couple words from our sponsors, and uh, we'll look forward to that game. Hi, I'm Luke Beeman with Reese Nichols Golden Key Realty. We're located north of Warsaw on Highway 65. We have 14 real estate agents with 275 combined real estate years of experience. Give us a call at 660-438-7228. Please visit us on our website, recentnichols.com. All right, and we're back for the Coaches Show Week 2, lining up here for the Wildcats versus the Versailles Tigers. Going to host them tonight. And, uh, Coach, what are we looking for out of Versailles? Uh, it's, you know, they have a new head coach there, kind of a new system from what we're used to seeing in, in years past. And uh, with that... They have you know have some good size, especially with their quarterback and and up front. Um, but again, with it being new, they're, they're going to try to spread us out a little bit more, uh, two wide, five wide, things like that. And then defensively, you don't see every week a three three stack. So with that, you have to make some adjustments interior. But you know they uh, they're coming off a week one win, and I know they they're excited about that. Have some momentum, so it kind of had a, a kind of had to pull that one out at the end. I think it was what twenty one fourteen or something yeah. like that over Nob Nostra, I think. Yeah, yep, and it was and it was a back and forth game, you know. And both those teams having new coaches, uh, you can kind of, kind of tell they're just filling each other out, and uh, a lot of momentum shifts and things like that. And so, yeah, we're we're excited for them, and you know our big stress to our guys is let's learn from week one, but. Week one's over, and now we're, we're on to week two here. Yeah, get into the 24-hour rule. You get to enjoy that yep. one through Saturday. Yep. Sunday, it's film time. So, 100%. So I'm sure that's what they've been doing for us. Offensively, uh, we saw 
a really nice ground attack last week from the Wildcats and, and then saw Brady take advantage of a couple passes through the air. Um, how do we look to maybe attack a 3-3 stack? Yeah, it's one. It's nice to have that, that one-two punch, especially starting from the backfield where um, we're confident in all of our guys and they all <clears throat> bring – you know certain features to that run game attack, and then and same deal. You know it's I know receivers were thrown to quite a bit last week, but but we're comfortable with with all of our guys, and and with that it's it's taking what the defense gives us. Uh, right. We've really been working with Brady and continue to work with him, just going through his reads and his progressions, and uh, and again with our receivers last week, it was spacing was such a huge issue. We kind of lost focus of where we're at on the field, and when you have two guys running three feet from each other. Right. Neither one of them are open, and so right. um, yeah. So it's again, it's one. Um, our guys. Of course, the ground game loose. always opens up the air. Oh, without a doubt. So, so if you can get that established early, that op opens mm -hmm. up a lot more opportunities for Brady and that and those guys on the outside. Yeah. So, w offensively, what do we expect to see? We expect them to spread it out on us a little bit, maybe yep. challenge some of our defensive backs. They probably know we've got a couple younger guys out there too. Oh yeah. And uh, you look for them to take advantage. They know they see our rosters just like we do theirs. So, uh, you know. Defensively, what kind of adjustments do we make? Uh, with that, it's just, you know, where we told our secondary, hey, last week, I think Cole came through the ball five times. So this week, they're probably going to And I think we picked off two of the two five. Of them. Yeah, two <laughs> of the five. So if you want to keep that percentage, that would be great. Uh, but this week, I mean, if, if they hold true to what film shows, and, you know, they're probably going to throw the ball about 25, 30 times a game. And so, you know, with that, you like to challenge your secondary. And, and now it's your time to step up and, you uh, not carry the team, but you know, show show what you're made of, and and you know, we don't get too far into it, but this is a, a district opponent also, and right. so with that, it, it even a week two, an old a, conference opponent, but old, a new yep. district opponent. Yep. So, so. okay, um, and of course, we get opportunities probably to run some some quarterbacks against our defense because with you and Coach Morrison, I guess you guys could probably step in and have you done that with them? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he dialed up a little bit. Yeah, it, it was funny. Um, Coach Barry and Coach Payne stopped by practice not too long ago. They just both happened to be around. And uh, as I joked with them, I said, you know, we have, we have these, like, design blocking plays for this quarterback. Uh, I said, hey, we, we gave you option. You always had the option, you know. And, right. Which, obviously, you know, we're always grateful for. But, yeah, we got a kick out of that. <laughs> I'll bet so. So, Wildcats host the Versailles Tigers tonight, 7 o'clock kickoff at Randy Morrow Field. And uh, should be a lot nicer night. Yeah. Um, last week was a little bit on the toasty side, but I think they're only looking low 80s. So, yeah, right probably on. that game time sticking at 8, sticking for the 7 o'clock time. 7 well. o'clock time, so, yep. Um, 7 o'clock kickoff at Randy Morrow Field tonight. Um, what else can we expect? I know we got tailgates going on, got some sponsors there. Yep. A lot of stuff going on. Yes. Uh, again, for our quarterback club members, we have our, our tailgate in our high school cafeteria. I know it went well last week. Um, this week it is H and C Plumbing, BA Supply, and I want to say it wrong. Little Miss Truman Lake. Little Miss Truman Lake. Shay Cheryl. Shay Cheryl. Yes. Right. Um, there are sponsors this week. We're always grateful for that. Um, all of our middle school and high school kids are selling the Wildcat cards. I know people in the community really enjoy those. So. And, some, and some really good discounts on them. Yes, they so, really are. So you, we've bought one here. Yeah. We have ours purchased, and. Uh, yeah, some, a lot of good discounts there. So if you're interested in one of those, you can contact uh, any coaching staff. Uh, you can contact any football player. And uh, you can find them on social media and stuff like that, too. Kind of holler and say, hey, I need my discount card. And somebody will get in touch with you. So uh, a lot of good discounts from area merchants there. And then uh, also, uh, of course, concession stands are out there. But also, uh, we talk about the Booster Club a lot. And, yep. and we can't give those girls uh, or guys, everybody that pitches in, uh, enough credit. But... I know they've got a lot of nice new apparel, a lot of nice new spirit items. Yep. Uh, they've got their membership drive going on right now. If you haven't gotten to be a member yet, yeah, they're open out there. You can do all For this sure. Friday night. Yes. No, it's it's, it's neat and, and like I said, you know, last weekend was a an example. You know, it carried over to Saturday. We had our, our youth guys out there for a big jamboree and you know, Bush called even contributes there with a you know concession stands and so. Um, it goes beyond just, you know, what we do on Friday nights. Right. Yeah, and speaking of those youth guys, I'm going to give them a little prop yep. here. Yep. Um, they're off this week. Of course, they aren't going to play Labor Day weekend, and uh, us coaches appreciate that. <laughs> yep. But they'll kick off next week. I think all those guys go down to Skyline. Of course, the Flag Kids go up to Sedalia and play yep. in their league. Um, so I think numbers there are great. I oh, think yeah. that uh, 
30 some, I think they had two teams, first mm -hmm. and second graders at flag. And then I think at the third and fourth grade, they've got like almost 35 kids out. Right. And then at the fifth and sixth grade, I think they've got 26 or seven kids out. So numbers are good. It so, is. So everything's looking up it's here. Great to see. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of good stuff going on with the program. And we're going to update some, the, the crowd here real quick. Just you mentioned James Kellner earlier. Uh, James, of course, a senior, yep. uh, four year player for the Wildcats, two or three year letterman probably, yep. um, I'm guessing, and a big senior leader that was in that defensive backfield. Of course, he comes down with an injury in Jamboree, what are we, four plays into the Jamboree that night? Yeah, it was early And on. comes down with an injury. Kind of update us on what happened to him, where he's at now. I think we got some good news this week. Yeah, unfortunately, um, yeah, he had an ankle injury there, and it's hate to lose him. You know, you don't lose him on the team, but you lose him on the field for a little bit. And just, he's such a, a great kid, an emotional leader. Um, kind of the backbone of that of that defense. And so to that, um, he got evaluated, was able to get, get a surgery and start the recovery process. And he's very optimistic. And I know so everything went great Monday for him. It did, um, it did. Yeah, so he had his surgery. Everything's really great for him. And, and I think I, I spoke with his mother and, and now they're they're on the recovery process. Yep. You know, everything's done that's going to be done, and now we're working on the recovery and hope to hope to see him back maybe later in the year. We'll see Hopefully. how that works out. Hopefully. I know he's hoping. I know. So, yep. yep. So, all right. So Wildcats versus Sales Tigers, Rainy Mar Field, seven o'clock kickoff, and uh, we thank you for tuning in. And hope to see you tonight. This has been a BCE TV production. Thank you for watching.